Greetings, SJD family and friends. My name is CJ Miles. Our senior pastor is Reverend Dr. Joseph L. Marshall. Look, we just wanted to personally take time out to thank you for tuning in on today. If you would be so kind to like our Facebook page as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. We don't want you to miss out on anything taking place here at SJD. It is here at SJD where we are persuaded and convinced that God is not only an on time God, but he's also an on line God. Be encouraged. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father as well as our Savior Jesus Christ. Most certainly we give honor to our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Joseph L. Marshall, to Lady Terry Marshall, and to last but not least to those of you who are at home watching us via our YouTube page or our Facebook page. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, um, for joining us today for Wednesdays in the Word. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Look, we're very much mindful here at SJD that there are so many other churches you could be watching, not just here in Pensacola, but all over this world. But for whatever reason, you tuned in to SJD on today. And for that, we are just tremendously thankful. So again, for the third time, thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir, for your online presence as well as your attention. I want to have a brief word of prayer, and then I want to go ahead and get right into the word of God. Let us pray. Lord, how grateful we are on today, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. God, despite of everything that's going on in this world, we can still see evidence of the goodness of the Lord in our lives. For that, we tell you thank you, God. Lord, I want to personally thank you for that young lady and that young man who's watching online, Father. God, you know what they're going through, God. You know, they're, well, you know what they've been through, Father. And God, I just pray a special blessing upon them, Father, that you would speak to them, Father. You know what they need to hear, Father. I just pray, God, that you would use me, Father, to speak to them, Father. Move by your power like only you can, Father. Allow your spirit to have its way, Father. And I'll make sure I'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's always in the master's name of Jesus Christ I do pray, and all of God's people said amen. If you would be so kind to grab your copy of God's word and turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Um, a very familiar passage of scripture, um, James um, chapter 1. Um, while you're turning to James chapter 1, um, I want to go ahead and give a shout out um, to Reverend Slaughter, Reverend Jerome Slaughter, and to Reverend Carrick Williams, along with um, our pastor, Dr. Joseph L. Marshall. Um, the, month of October, the month of October is Clergy Appreciation Month, and I definitely want to give them respect, um, for they deserve respect. Um, all three of them are a tremendous blessing, not only to me, but to this church. So to Reverend Slaughter, um, to Reverend Williams, and of course, our pastor. Um, thank you, brothers. Thank you, sir, um, for your contributions and your sacrifices, not only to the kingdom of God, but even to SJD. Um, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Um, I want to focus on that fifth verse. Um, I want to focus on that fifth verse. Um, but just so we can have contextual analysis um, so you can get the background before I give you the breakdown, I want to look at the first, I'm going to go ahead and read all five verses, even though I'm only going to be focusing on verse number five. Um, James chapter one, starting at verse number one, um, there you will find these words. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, my brethren. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Verse number five. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. For the next 25 to 30 minutes, um, I simply want to talk and teach um, from the subject, how to deal with life. Um, how to deal with a life. How to deal with a life. One thing that you and I have in common, neither one of us are no match for life by ourselves. Um, 
that, 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 look, despite of my differences and despite of your differences, look, one thing that we both have in common, neither one of us are, we're not any match for life by ourselves. J j just in case you think I'm lying or you think I misspoke, let me remind you of the proverbial writer in Proverbs 28, verse 26, who said, anybody who trusts in themselves is a fool. Um, now, I'm not calling you a fool. I, I would not disrespect you like that. However, the Bible says anybody who trusts in themselves is a fool. A anybody who thinks they're smart enough to make it in life um, by themselves, a anybody who thinks that they are strong enough to make it by themselves in this life, the Bible classifies that individual as a fool. Look, look ladies and gentlemen, life is... This roller coaster that we call life, um, yeah, yeah, that's what it is, a roller coaster, especially if you're living in 2020. Um, this roller coaster that sometimes it seems like it don't even go up sometimes. Sometimes it's like it seems like it's just steady going down. This roller coaster that we're living in here in 2020, this roller coaster called life is too complicated. Um, this roller coaster called life, um, it, it changes too much. Um, this roller coaster ca called life is so uncertain. Um, I, I don't care how much sense you have, some stuff that happens in this life just don't make any sense. I, I don't care how much logic you may have, some stuff that happens in this life is not logical. I mean, when you consider the fact that here in 2020, all the things that we have to deal with as African Americans, when you consider everything we have to deal with in our own personal lives, when you consider the fact that we have to deal with real problems, fake friends, and real enemies, when you consider the fact that we have to deal with the death of loved ones, that it seems like each day the, number keep, the numbers keep increasing on, in regards to how many people are, are, are dying, when you consider um, all the losses that we locally have had here in Pensacola, um, Dr. Bernard C. Yates, Dr. Michael Johnson, um, Dr. Matthew Payne, when, when you consider all the loved ones that we've lost, when you consider all the people who have um, contracted this um, COVID-19 virus, when you consider the financial problems, when you consider your own struggles that you struggle with, when you consider the frustrations of life, uh, life is too complicated for you to, for you to navigate through life by yourself. I, I know you think you're smart, and I know you think you're educated, and I know you think you all that, but I just stop by to remind you that you are no match for life by yourself. Um, you, you are no match for life by your sight, by, by yourself. Um, I, I don't care how much you, uh, I don't care how much you think you know. Look, you can read your Bible every day. Um, you can pray every day. Um, you, you can know all the scriptures in the Bible. Look, life will show you that you're not as smart as you think you are. Um, look, life has a way of making you, uh, li life has a way of hurting your feelings. Man, I, I wish somebody understood what I was saying. Life has a way, that, that's almost the best way I can, I, can, I can verbalize or articulate life. Life has a way of hurting your feelings. Matter of fact, somebody's watching me right now. Either life has hurt your feelings or the people in life has hurt your feelings. Either way, life has a way of showing you, ladies and gentlemen, that you are no match for it by yourself. And yet the question remains, how do you deal with life? Um, how do you deal with life? How, how do you deal with the loss of loved ones? How do you deal with um, cancer? Um, how, how do you deal um, with bad reports from the doctor? How, how, how do you deal with losing your job? How, how do you deal with frustration and being depressed? And it just seems like you can't put one foot in front of the other. It seems like anytime you take one step, you take two steps back. How, how do you deal with life and all these uncertainties? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. That's a good question. Because if you've ever felt that way, ladies and gentlemen, you know exactly how the people here in our text felt. Oh, yes, I, I'm still in the text. Um, this is Wednesdays in the Word. I got to stick with the text. Our pastor is Dr. Joseph L. Marshall. I got to stick with the text. And here in our text, ladies and gentlemen, we find a brother by the name of James. You, you know James. I, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. You already know James. James is the half-brother of Jesus. And, and here in our text, we find James writing this letter to a group of believers um, and these believers, they were in an unfamiliar position. They were, they were dealing with unfamiliar trials and tribulations. And look, life was a mess for them. 
um, life was a mess for these believers. And these believers, ladies and gentlemen, in our text, they're struggling. They're struggling. Um, they are going through things that they didn't think they would ever go through. They're dealing with things that they didn't ever think they would have to deal with. Um, and here, here in our text, ladies and gentlemen, we find James writing this letter. We find James putting pen to paper, and James is trying to encourage these believers who are going through a trying time. And, and I can't speak for you, but when I, when I first read the text, I'm expecting James to tell these believers who are struggling, I'm expecting James to tell them, um, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Um, I'm expecting James to tell them to um, lift up your eyes into the hills from whence cometh your help. Um, I, I'm, expecting James to, I'm expecting James to tell them something of that nature. But, but James doesn't tell them to lift up their eyes into the hills from whence cometh their help. J James doesn't tell them to trust in the Lord. Rather, James tells these believers in the first chapter of James, he, he tells these believers, or rather, he brings up a word that's kind of abnormal or unusual. You, you wouldn't think a word like this would come up in the, midst, in the midst while people are going through the most roughest time of their life. James brings up a word called wisdom. I'm not lying, I'm writing the text. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, wait, 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 wait a minute, James. These believers are going through the worst time of their life and out of all of the words you could have used to encourage them, you're going to bring up the word wisdom? Wait a minute, no, no, no. James, th these believers are struggling. Th these believers are struggling to even hold on to their faith during these trying times. And out of all the words you could have used to encourage them, James, you're going to bring up the word wisdom? W wisdom? James, why would you bring up a word called wisdom during a time like this. I, I believe the reason James brought up the subject matter of wisdom is because James realized that even though what they were going through was over their heads, it was not over God's head. I'm going to say that one more time. Even though what they were going through it was over their heads. They couldn't understand why they were struggling. They couldn't understand why they were dealing with what they were dealing with. It was over their head, but James understood it was not over God's head. See, just because stuff may be hard or difficult for you, that don't mean it's hard or difficult for God. So since it's not over God's head, James recommends wisdom to these believers because James knows that even though you all may not be able to handle it, we serve a God that sits high and looks low. We, we, we serve a God that's still in control. We, we, we serve a God that Isaiah said there's no searching of his understanding. It, even though it may be over your head, it's not over God's head. So James recommends wisdom in the midst of trying times, in, in the midst of all the hurt that they're dealing with, James recommends wisdom to the believers here in our text. Matter of fact, as Pastor Marshall would say, um, let me keep one foot in the text, but then let me keep one foot in the times. I believe that's good advice not only for the believers here in our text, but I believe that's good advice for me, and that's good, that's good advice for you, young lady. That's good advice for you, young man, in the midst of you being in an unfamiliar position, in the midst of you having to shed tears, in the midst of you being frustrated and depressed, in, in, in the midst of everything that you've been going through this whole year in 2020, I believe wisdom is what you and I need. I, I know the songwriter said what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Look, I, I'm, I'm not going to argue with that, but the world indeed may need some love, but I assure you, we as believers, we not only need love, but we need some wisdom. And James, he recommends wisdom to the believers here in our text. Um, he, he, he recommends wisdom. See, wisdom, um, one of the best examples I could give you when it comes to wisdom, James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let, if any man lack wisdom. One of the best examples I can give you of wisdom of, would be when Jesus, Jesus, he differentiated between a wise and a foolish person in Matthew chapter 7. I want to read it for you. Matthew chapter 7, um, verses 24 through 27. Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 7. He says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise person who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded upon the rock. 
and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them, he will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Watch this. With, with the wise and the foolish, watch this ladies and gentlemen, Why, those who have wisdom and those who don't have wisdom, both of them have the storms of life come in their lives. Again, I just read it for you. Those who have wisdom and those who don't have wisdom, both have the storms of life come in their lives. But watch, here's the difference. Those who have wisdom, look, wisdom will keep you even in the midst of storms. See, wisdom don't always keep you from storms. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Um, wisdom does not keep you from storms. However, wisdom will keep you in the midst of a storm. See, I know some of y'all, you don't want to say amen. You're getting ready to log off because you want me to get up here and say um, your blessings on the way and God's going to do it and God's going to make a way and God's going to open the door and God's going to do this and God's going to do that. But I stopped by to tell you, God may not open the door. Um, God may not do this. God may not do that. And guess what? If God does doesn't do it, you're going to need something to keep you from losing your mind in the midst of, in the midst of trials and tribulation. You, you're going to need something to keep you in the midst of everything that you're going through. And James says, look, James could have easily said, look, um, y'all um, I'm, I'm y'all need to pray um, that God going to make a way. James didn't tell him to pray that God going to make a way. Um, James didn't pray for God, God going to show out in your life. No. James says, what you need in the midst of what you're going through, what I need in the midst of what I'm going through, what, what we need is wisdom. Because ladies and gentlemen, how to deal with life? God doesn't always do that which we wanted him to do. H hello? Do, 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 do you hear me? I mean, if you're living in 2020, you ought to know this by now. Um, g g you ought to know that, look, g how you think things are going to work out, um, how you think things are going to fall into place, that does, it doesn't always happen like that. What, what we expect God to do, uh, what we, some of the things that we expect God to do, he doesn't do it. So I need something that's going to help me. I need something that's going to strengthen me. I need something that's going to direct me. I need something that's going to keep me even in the midst of the storms of life. And James knew that the believers in the text, as well as you and I, the thing that we need most in regards to dealing with life and in regards to dealing with the storms of life, we need the wisdom of God. J J James recommends wisdom. He don't say trust in the Lord. He, no, James said you need some wisdom. Yeah, yes, you need to trust in the Lord, but you need some wisdom in order to deal with life. He, he says if any man lack wisdom, um, again, ladies and gentlemen, wisdom is not going to keep you from tough times. Wisdom is not going to keep you from the storms, but, but wisdom will keep you in the storms. Um, wisdom won't keep you from bad news, but wisdom will keep you in the midst of bad news. Wisdom won't keep you from losing loved ones or losing friends, but, but um, wisdom will keep you in the midst of losing loved ones and losing friends. Look, James brings up the subject matter of wisdom because James understands, ladies and gentlemen, in order for me to deal with life, in order for you to deal with life, what we need the most is wisdom. No, 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 no. You don't need another, you don't need another drink. You need wisdom. No, 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 no. You don't need to smoke another cigarette. No, you need wisdom. No, no. You don't need to get caught, you don't need to get caught up in no entanglement. You don't need to text no, no midnight text and late. No, no. What you need when the storms of life are raging, um, when you're about to lose your mind, when tears are coming down your eyes, when your heart is broken, when you're confused, you need the wisdom that comes from Almighty God. That, that's how you deal with life. If, if you want to know how to deal with life, we need wisdom. James brings up this word wisdom. Uh, wisdom. Matter of fact, that's my first point. If you're taking notes, um, my subject on how to deal with life, in, in order to deal with life, you need wisdom. You, you, you need wisdom. You need wisdom. Um, James says in verse 5, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask or let her ask um, of God. If any man lack wisdom, 
um, wisdom. This word um, Sophia in the Greek, um, Sophia in the Greek. Um, Deacon Rivers, he taught about this a couple weeks ago in Bible, in, excuse me, in Sunday school. For those of you who don't attend Sunday school, um, ma'am, sir, um, I assure you, we have one of the best Sunday school teachers in America, Deacon Rivers. 945 every Sunday morning, you need to tune in and listen to Deacon Rivers. As Pastor Marshall say, look, the, the teaching of the word of God will keep you. Um, this word wisdom that James recommends here in, in chapter, in verse 5, um, the word Sophia in the Greek, um, wisdom simply put, ladies and gentlemen, is applying God's principles to my life. Um, I, I mean, it's a lot of definitions for wisdom, a lot of fancy definitions, but I, I'm just, to, to keep it elementary as I can, wisdom simply put here in this text is applying God's principles, applying God's word um, to my life or my situation. See, ladies and gentlemen, we don't always see life the way God sees life. See, see, we see life, we see some of the things that we're going through as God trying to break us. Uh, but wisdom can wisdom tells us, or wisdom reminds us that sometimes it ain't God trying to break us, rather, God is trying to build us. Um, um, we, we, we see sometimes in life what we're going through as life or God is trying to make us bitter. Um, but wisdom says God is not necessarily trying to make me bitter. Rather, what God is trying to do, God is trying to make me better. Uh, see, w wisdom helps us to see things the way God sees things because the way we see life, the way we see um, trials and tribulations, the way we see people who walk out of our life, the way, the way we see the struggles of life is not the same way that God sees what we're going through. Um, I'm, not, I'm not lying to you, I'm in a text, because if you look prior to our text, he says, um, my brethren, count it all joy when you go through dire... Wait, wait, what? What? Count it all joy? What, what the... C count it? You... You, you, you mean when I'm going through trials and tribulations? You, you, you mean when I've heard cancer from the doctor? You, you mean when I've lost a loved one? You, you mean when I've lost a job? Um, you, you, you mean when, when my heart is broken? You mean when my tears, uh, when I have tears coming down my eyes? He, James says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Um, no, verse number three, um, knowing that the trying of your faith um, work it patience, um, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. What? Look, th that ain't how I see what I'm going through. Y it, young lady, young man, d d don't you sit here and lie in the church. I, don't you sit here and lie online. You know good and well what you're going through right now. You, you don't see what you're going through as the way James is painting this picture. You, you don't see what you're going through as the trying of your patience. You, you, you don't see what you're going through as, you, you, you don't see cancer. You don't see a loved one. You don't see a loss of a job. You, you don't see frustration. You don't see this as the trying of your faith. No, you don't see it like that. If you, if you do say you see like that, you need to stop lying. You lie too much. That's why I don't like it when you tune in. You always be lying. Every time you tune in, you always tell them lies. Look, be, be real for once. Look, we don't see our struggles the way God sees our, our struggles. See, God sees our struggles as that the trying of our faith, that, that our, our heartaches, our, 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 our headaches, um, the trials and the tribulations of life. God sees that as it's, it's building our faith. Um, it, it's making us stronger. It's making us better. Well, we don't see what we're going through that way. So since we don't see our, our life the way God sees our life, since we don't see our problems the way God sees our problems, we, in order for us to see things from God's perspective, we need the wisdom of God. Look, look, because most of the time, ladies and gentlemen, if the truth be told, our mind, our mind is not right when we're going through, when we're going through. Um, our mind is not right. If, if the truth be told, some of us, our mind ain't right even when things are going good in our life. But, but definitely when things are going bad in our lives, our, our mind is not right. Matter of fact, somebody's watching me right now. Your mind ain't right. You, you ain't thinking right. You, 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 your, your, your mind, the way, it's, the way it's operating right now. Look, you, you don't see God in, in, his, in his proper perspective right now when you're going through what you're going through. Because ladies and gentlemen, life, 
um, trials and tribulations, it, it has a way of messing up your mind. Um, it has a way of messing up how you see life and how you see God. And since, ladies and gentlemen, since we don't see God correctly, we need wisdom so we can have a divine perspective. Because our perspective of what we're going through is it, not right. It's not accurate. Um, we need a divine perspective. And that can only come, ladies and gentlemen, from the wisdom of God. Look, you, you, you need something to help you deal with life. Um, you, you need something to help you navigate through life. No, 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 no. You, you need something um, that's beyond this world. So, so often, ladies and gentlemen, um, when we're going through trials and tribulations, we, we look for stuff in the world or we look for people who are in the world to help us out. No, no, ladies and gentlemen, for what you're dealing with, for, for, yeah, for what you're dealing with, you, you need something or someone beyond this world. You, you, matter of fact, we, we need someone who's outside of this world that can help us in the world. We, we, we need somebody who's over who can help us down here who are under. And ladies and gentlemen, that, that, that resource that, that we need is called wisdom. And James recommends wisdom to these believers who are going through a tough time. Now, he doesn't recommend knowledge. He recommends wisdom. I, I, I find that funny because m most people, um, we, so, we, get, we so stuck on knowledge. We want to we wanna read. Ain't nothing wrong with reading, but you should read books. Uh, you should read. But we, we get too caught up and we depend on knowledge. We, we, we type in our questions on the internet and we see what the internet has to say. Sooner or later, you got to stop fooling around with the internet and start fooling with God and see what God has to say about your situation. Because wisdom, again, wisdom is the skillful ability to apply God's word to my life. Well, what does God have to say about what you're going through? I, I know you've talked to people, but what does God have to say? See, we get too caught up in knowledge. See, see knowledge um, deals with the facts. Um, wisdom deals with my faith. Um, knowledge um, is when I go to people. Um, wisdom is when I go to God. Um, knowledge is informational. Um, wisdom is transformational. Um, what I'm going through in my life, I don't just need some information, but I need, I need some things in my life to be transformed. Matter of fact, I believe I'm talking to someone who, what you're going, with, what you're going through in your life, look, you don't, you don't need some information, you don't need knowledge, but you rather, you need some transformation in your life. In order to get transformation in your life, we need the wisdom that comes from Almighty God. J J James said, if you're going to deal with life, um, you, you, you need somewhere. You know, like, how do you think our grandparents and the saints of old made it through tough times? They, they didn't have the education that we had. Um, they didn't get a master's degree. They didn't have a doctoral degree. But I'll tell you one thing they did have. They had the wisdom that came from Almighty God. Um, we're so quick to quote that scripture in Proverbs. I believe it's Proverbs 4, verse 7, that says, um, um, we talk about, um, you know, getting wisdom. We talk about understanding. We talk about all the different things and all the different aspects of Proverbs. But my favorite verse in Proverbs, it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Um, we love to quote the other part that says, with all that getting, get understanding. We quote the second half of that, but we don't quote the first half of that. The first half that says, wisdom is the principal thing. Look, ladies and gentlemen, if you and I are going to make it through life, we need the wisdom that comes from Almighty God. Pastor Marshall, he brought up this stat, and I think it's worth mentioning again. Um, the Bible talks about worship 27 times. The Bible talks about joy 165 times. But the Bible talks about wisdom 234 times. Ladies and gentlemen, why do you think the Bible keeps bringing up this subject matter of wisdom? Because if we're going to make it in life, ladies and gentlemen, what we need the most is wisdom. James says, if any man lack wisdom, uh, if any man lack wisdom, what we need in order to make it in life is wisdom. Um, if we're going to make it in life, we need wisdom. That's my first point. But my second point, James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Is, is that what your Bible says? It says, if any man lack wisdom, let him or her ask of 
God. In other words, bring God into the equation. I know you've already, um, you've researched on the internet. I know you've, um, you've made a post on Facebook to get other people to comment and, get, and, see how, and see how they view your situation. I know you've reached out to your girlfriend and your boyfriend and you've reached out to other people, but when the last time you included God in your situation? J James says, let him ask of God. Ladies and gentlemen, that would suggest that in order to get wisdom, Wisdom, just, wisdom is not just going to happen to you automatically. Um, wisdom happens by request. In other words, you have to ask God for wisdom. We're, oh, oh, we're quick to ask God for the husband. I know you ask God for the wife. I know you ask God for the car. I know you ask God for the job. But when's the last time you ask God for wisdom? Um, I'll show you what you need the most in order to deal with life, it, it ain't the man, it, 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 ain't, it ain't the woman, um, it, it ain't the car, it ain't no, what you need the most is wisdom. And James says, let him ask of God. You, you have to ask God for wisdom. Look, you, you can't be shy when it comes to wisdom. This is something that it should be a part of your prayer life every day, that Lord, I need wisdom. Wisdom. Um, I, I never forget as a child, um, I would go over to different people's house and people would be cooking and people would, they would be, you know, the people would be cooking, you know, cooking with fried chicken or fish or whatever it is they're cooking. And, you know, me, I'm a big person. I like to eat and I want something to eat. And, you know, you know, I'd be wanting to ask people for food, um, but, you know, I'd be trying to be nice and, you know, play my cards right. Um, but then eventually I would have to break down, excuse me, they would, they, people would pick at me and they'd be like, look, hey, CJ, look, man, I mean, if you want something to eat, man, just ask. We, 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 look, man, we know you be, we, we know you like to eat, man, come on. If you want something to eat, look, just ask. We, we, we'll give you some. And, and I believe likewise in that same spirit, the Lord who sits high and looks low, he's looking down. He sees you and I struggling. He sees you and I late, late in the midnight hour crying and frustrated. And what God is doing, God is waiting. Look, I, God is willing to give us wisdom, but we have to ask for wisdom. James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. See, see, we, we undervalue wisdom. Um, again, we ask, for, we ask for anything and everybody else except for wisdom. That, that's why it baffles me when Solomon, when God, allowed, when God granted Solomon, um, God gave Solomon the ability to make one, he, Solomon could make one request. God told Solomon in the Old Testament, he said, Solomon, you can ask me for anything and I'll give it to you. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you ain't lying, I hope you ain't lying. Um, if you know good and well, if God asked you, if God told you you can ask for one thing, you know good and well, wisdom would not be on the top of your list. But Solomon, when God, asked, when God told Solomon, Solomon, you can ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. Solomon asked for wisdom because in order to deal with life, what you need the most you need wisdom. Wisdom will keep you from losing your mind. Wisdom will keep you after you've lost a loved one. Wisdom will keep you after you've heard a bad report from the doctor. Wisdom will keep you when people walk out your life. Wisdom will keep you when your heart is broken. Well, no, the thing that you and I need the most is wisdom. And God is willing to give it to us, but we must ask. James says, let him ask of God. Well, why would you ask God? Who else you gonna ask? Who else is that there's no searching of his understanding? Who else put the roof roof and the dog and the meow and the cat? Who else put the stars in the sky? Who else knows all things? Who else is the Alpha and Omega? Who else is the one that can make all things work together for your good? Who else is the one that can take a lippy and turn to a lobby? Who else is to take your suffering and your pain and work it out for you? Who else would you ask but God? There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God that can make waves like he can. There's no God, there's no God who can pick you up like he can. Look, he says, ask God. No, 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 he didn't say ask Steve Harvey. He said, ask God. Ask God for wisdom. If you're going to make it in life, ladies and gentlemen, James recommends to you and I to ask God for, for wisdom. Look, let the one who gave you life, let him help you with life. Let the one who gave you life, God, let him help you with life. Ask God for wisdom. 
I, I should never forget um, when I got my first GPS, um, I was going to Tallahassee and I, I had put in the address to where I was going and the GPS, it, it helped me get to my destination. Um, the GPS, it gave me the best route to get to my destination. Um, the GPS, it, it even told me where there was going to be um, slow traffic, where, where the cars were going to be moving slow. The GPS would even redirect me sometimes if I was on the wrong path and tell me, to, uh, turn around, go back, take two blocks and turn left. Look, the GPS would he help me get to my destination. That's when I was driving in the car. But ladies and gentlemen, when we're driving in this thing called life, we also have a resource. It's not called the GPS. It's called the G-O-D. And the G-O-D will keep you from losing your mind. The G-O-D will in all thy ways acknowledge him. And the G-O-D will direct your path. The G-O-D will show you what to do. The G-O-D will show you how to navigate through a bad doctor's report. The G-O-D will show you how to deal with losing a loved one. The G-O-D will show you how to go forward in 2020. Look, use the G-O-D. James says, any man who lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Look, in order to make it in life, ladies and gentlemen, um, we need wisdom, number one. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, we have to ask God. We have to ask God. Wisdom just don't come automatically. We have to ask God. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, number three. Um, number three is, the, this is, this is the shouting part right here. Number three is, you know that whenever you ask God for wisdom, that he's going to give it to you. I ain't lying. I'm writing the text. I'm writing the text. It says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally. It says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. Is, is, that, is that what your Bible says? Look, there are some things I can ask God for. I don't know if he's going to bless me with it or not. Um, I, 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 I know somebody doesn't want to hear this, but there are some things that you can ask God for in prayer, and, and God, may, God may or he may not do it. Um, th there are some requests, there are some desires that we have, um, there are some things that we want God to do, that God, th there's a good possibility that God won't do it. But this is why I find joy in this passage, is because there's one thing I know that I can ask God for, and God going to give it to me. I can ask God for a car right now. He might not give me with the, He may not give me the car. I can ask God for a new job right now. He may not give me the car. He may not give me the new job. I, I can ask God to heal my loved one. Guess what? God may allow my loved one to die. I, I can ask God to help my loved one get better, and my loved one might get worse. I, I'm, I can pray and ask God for things to get better. Things may not get better. But one thing I can ask God for, and I know that God will bless me with, I, I, I don't know. I didn't say there's a, there's a possibility that he'll give it to me. I didn't say there's a good chance that he'll give me. No, there's one thing as believers that you and I know that if we ask God for it, God will give it to us. Well, what's that one thing, CJ? I'm so glad you asked. Wisdom. God, to God be the glory. Look, look, there are a lot of things that God may not give me, but one thing I can ask God for wisdom, and the text says he giveth to all man liberally. That, that, that word liberally, how close in the Greek, which means God don't mind. God, he, he, he give, he'll give it to you with joy. It, it, it does God good to give you wisdom. God is sitting up in heaven anticipating, waiting for you and I to ask him for wisdom, to include him in what you're going through. Ask God to, to, for the wisdom to help you navigate this season in your life. God don't mind giving us wisdom. And look what the text says. It says, and he upbraideth not. In other words, God ain't going to criticize you. He ain't going to look down on you. Look, God will give you wisdom. All you got to do is ask. That's all you got to do is ask God for wisdom, and God will give you the wisdom that you need in order to make it in life. Um, P Pastor Cleavon Derricks in Tennessee, he understood this truth. Um, Pastor Cleavon, he understood this truth. Um, you, those of you who are not familiar with Pastor Cleavon, um, Pastor Cleavon, he had a rough life. 
Um, he had to deal with trials and tribulations. Um, he, he had times in his life where he felt like he was going to give up. But in the midst of his rough life, he put pen to paper and he wrote a hymn that me, you, you and I, that we have, we have been singing down through the years. He said, I may have my doubts and my fears. He said, sometimes my eyes are filled with tears. But he said, the Lord is a friend who watches both day and night. He says, I go to him in prayer. I go to him in prayer because he knows my every care. And then they would say, just a little talk with the Lord makes everything all right. All I'm trying to tell those of you who are watching, I don't know what you're going through on this, on this, on this day, on this Wednesday here in October. But one thing I do know, if you have a little talk with the Lord, ask God for wisdom. God has, a, has the proclivity and the tendency to, if he don't make everything all right, God will make you all right. I'm going to say that again. If God don't make everything everything all right, God will make you all right. God will, get you, God will give you the, the mentality. God will give you the strength. God will give you the peace to deal with whatever life brings to you. Look, look, thank God for wisdom. I, I'm done, but I, I'm grateful for wisdom. I am grateful for wisdom. I'm grateful that I don't have to go through life by myself. I don't, I don't have to try to navigate life by myself. I don't have to try to figure out life by myself, but I can go to God in prayer. I can ask God for wisdom, and God will give me wisdom. Th thank God for the wisdom of God. Th thank God for the wisdom of God. Th thank God that I got something that will help me navigate through the tough times in life. How do you deal with life? How do you deal with life? James recommends wisdom. James says, ask for it. Request wisdom. And then James assures us, that wisdom will be granted. God will give you and I wisdom. Look, th that's what we need in life, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I know we think we need a lot of other things, but what we need the most to, to navigate the storms of life, we need the wisdom that comes from Almighty God. As I, as I said in my opening, wisdom don't keep you from the storms. Wisdom don't keep you from tough times, but wisdom will keep you in tough times. It is my prayer, it's my own personal prayer, that God will continue to give me wisdom in order to deal with life. And I pray that he would give you wisdom to deal with life. God knows here in 2020, um, with everything that's been going on here in this year, God knows you and I. Um, we, we need a lot of things, um, but I submit to you, young lady, young man, the thing that we need the most, we need wisdom. Let us Ask God on a daily basis. Let us ask God for the wisdom. Lord, I need wisdom to deal with black folk. Yes, I do. I, I need wisdom to deal with black folk. I need wisdom to deal with white folk. I, I need wisdom to, de to deal with co-workers. I need wisdom to deal with family members. I need wisdom to deal with bad news. I, I, need, wi I need wisdom. I need the wisdom of Almighty God. And I'm encouraged on today. And I pray that you're encouraged. Because you and I, all we have to do is ask God, and God will give us wisdom. God, how grateful we are um, for your word. How grateful we are, God, for this precious promise that even in the midst of tough times, even though you don't always deliver us out of tough times, you give us what we need to keep us in the midst of tough times. And Lord, we are so grateful, God, for the wisdom that's available to each and every one of us, God. God, I pray, God, that those who are listening right now, Father, that they would have a renewed energy, that they would have a renewed mentality, Father, to continue to request wisdom, God. Lord, um, what we're dealing with in 2020, God, we, we need some help. We, 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 we don't know how to navigate through all the, the ins and outs of 2020. But Lord, we're so grateful that we can look to you, God, and we know, God, that if we ask you for wisdom, that you love us so much that you'll give us wisdom. And, God, we know if we can get the wisdom of God in our lives, oh, God, everything else will fall into place, God. God, I pray, God, that we cling, that we, that we look, that we draw nigh to you, Father, and that we ask you for wisdom. And, God, we trust you, Father, that even in the midst of everything that we're dealing with right now, Father, that if we ask you for wisdom, that you would give it to us. And wisdom will help us to make it. Wisdom will help us to deal with life. It is in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.
Look, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for your online presence as well as your um, attention on today. Um, look, be sure to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, SJD Pensacola, as well as like our Facebook page. Let's continue um, to keep our pastor, um, Dr. Joseph L. Marshall, keep him in your thoughts and prayers, as well as let's keep each other in our thoughts and prayers, as well as the family of believers at Zion Hope Primitive Baptist Church, um, in the person of Dr. Bernard C. Yates, um, and his transition in that church family, um, our brothers and sisters over there on Leonard Street, um, let's keep Zion Hope as well as Sixth Avenue, uh, as well as Mount Zion and all the other churches in our thoughts and prayers. We're many members, but we're one body. Here at SJD, we are a family of believers doing it God's way. Look, be encouraged and don't forget, ask God for wisdom. God bless. God bless you. I pray that you have been sincerely inspired by both the worship and the word. And remember, here at SJD, we indeed are a family of believers doing it God's way. You be encouraged. Missionary Baptist Church would like to thank all of our online viewers for worshiping with us. We hope that you have enjoyed our virtual worship experience. We can't wait to see and connect with you in person here at St. John Divine. But until then, we invite you to worship with us online every Wednesday at 12 or 7 p.m. as well as Sundays at 8 or 11 a.m. And also remain faithful to God in your online giving via our church website, the Givelify app, as well as the Cash app. We also want to invite you to read Pastor's book pick for the month of October entitled The Politics of Jesus by Dr. Obrey M. Hendricks. Jesus is often viewed as an accompanist to society. However, this is far from the truth of Scripture. In Dr. Obrey's book, The Politics of Jesus, he explores the true revolutionary nature of Jesus' teachings and how they have been corrupted. Based on sound biblical interpretation and historical research, you will get to know Jesus in a deeper, more meaningful way and who he really was. Your holistic view of Jesus will never be the same. We have some exciting news and events that will be taking place in the near future. Be sure to take the time to subscribe to our YouTube page as well as like our Facebook page. We don't want you to miss anything taking place here at SJD. Remember, church is more than a building. It's a community of faith. So make sure you stay connected. Thank you again for your attention, your virtual presence, as well as for taking the time to do right by God in your giving. We are confident that the same God that will honor you if you were physically inside the sanctuary worshiping God and paying your tithes, is the same God that will honor you for worshiping God and paying your tithes virtually. Here at SJD, we are a family of believers doing it God's way. Remember, God loves you and so do we. And you are stronger than you think. Be encouraged.